Now, if you're struggling to get your hips open at impact, this is gonna be a crucial drill for you. And most people have never been shown the right way for the hips to work. Now, there's anterior and posterior tilt, and we don't need to know the fancy terms for this. Let's talk about belt buckle facing out versus belt buckle facing down. So if I rotate my hips this way where I'm sticking my butt out, then I have some flexion between my upper leg and my pelvis. If I, that my belt buckle is gonna be down as that's happening. So feeling like I'm letting my hips rotate back and my belt buckle is now facing the ground. Now, if I tuck my butt under and my butt comes forward, my belt buckle goes up, now there's no angle between my upper legs and my pelvis. And when you're in this position and you have an angle there, you can easily rotate. Your hips can rotate open. As I start to tuck the pelvis under, now all of a sudden I can't rotate my hips. They're gonna lock up and I'm gonna slow down. So what tour players are doing and what all the best players in the world are doing to get those hips to rotate open is they're tucking the, the belt buckle down, they're sticking their butt out, and that's getting in a position where we have flexion here between the upper, uh, upper legs and pelvis, and now I can rotate. You'll also wanna feel like a little cheat here as you get these knees facing out. I don't wanna feel like my knees are locked forward. So for example, my left leg in particular, I'm gonna have my, as I start my downswing, my belt buckle is gonna go down. I'm in a little bit of flexion here. My left knee is gonna go out as though I'm angling it the direction I want my hips to open. So if my knee's pointed here at the golf ball forward, very difficult to get the hips open. It's actually impossible to get the hips open. If I get my knee angled out, now as I rotate, that makes it much easier. So key number one, belt buckle down. I wanna feel like I'm doing that as I start my downswing. Key number two, left knee out as that's happening. Now lastly, again, I wanna feel like my knees are wide if I kick my right leg forward this way, I'm gonna to tend to slide. So that would be this type of a motion here where I slide forward. Well, look what happened. I came up out of my flex. I didn't keep my belt buckle down. And my knee where it slid forward, my hips moved left and right versus this knee staying out, this right leg staying out. And now I can rotate in there. So now that we know this, let's go over in a slow motion swing exactly how to feel it. So let's start at address. My hips are just gonna be neutral. I'm gonna feel like I'm bending forward a little bit. I don't really wanna feel like I'm sticking my butt way out. I'm just gonna be completely comfortable. Now from here, as I start my backswing, I'm gonna rotate my hips. Again, very comfortable, not sticking my butt out. As I start my downswing, I'm gonna let my belt buckle go to the ground and I'm gonna let my, my butt kind of stick out. That's that squat motion. I'm increasing the flex in my upper and lower body. As I'm doing that, that's when I'd be shallowing out the club. That's when my weight would be shifting to the left as that's happening. This left knee would be turning out. This right leg would be staying out here versus sliding in front. And now I can get that rotation happening. So when I feel like my hands are just kind of halfway down, I want to already feel like my hips are opening up. From there, I can go ahead and extend or get into my belt buckle coming up. So as I come through the shot, I can go ahead and extend to a nice full finish but it's that first move down, that's how you're gonna get your hips open. If you're waiting until the downswing, if you're waiting to down here to try to get them open, way too late. I wanna have that move happening up here, that way they're already out of the way, and I can just swing into a nice full finish. So that's what it looks like. Now all you gotta do, practice it a few times in slow motion, speed it up, and you're gonna get some pre dag on good drives. There we go, nice straight as a string drive. 322, not gonna do a whole lot better than that. And I felt like I was just able to squat down, let everything rotate on through, and it naturally just cleared out of the way. Now, there's one more piece I wanna to add to this, and that's what the shoulders are doing. You see, this is great to get the momentum of the body clearing out of the way, to take a lot of arms out of there. But if you're gonna have any kind of power, you have to rotate the upper body. And what I mean by this is what I call the power turn. And we have to get the upper body rotating in a specific way early in the swing. Most people wait till too late to get the upper body going. And if you wanna hit those really long drives and not even feel like you're swinging that hard, then that's exactly what you're gonna to wanna to do. I'm gonna play one of the best power turn videos that I have, teach you how to get 10, 15, 20 yards to your drives almost instantly. And I'll play a preview of that here in a second. All you need to do is go ahead and click the card that you see pop up on your screen. 
If you don't see that card, don't worry. Just go down to the description below. There'll be a link there where you can get instant access to this video. Let me show you some of the secrets to unlocking your body, get more speed out of it, even if you're as stiff as a board and have never been flexible enough to make that great turn. I wanna show you the, the trick to being able to do it. Let's go ahead and get started. Most of the instruction out there today is killing you of your power. The things that they're telling you to do can make you hit it shorter, and worse than that, not even any more consistent. I'm gonna go over some of the real secrets to powerful, consistent golf in this video. Let's go and get started. So here's some of the keys into making that happen. If you wanna incorporate this in your swing, let me break it down exactly what you should do. Number one, let's focus on the belt buckle. This is another big misconception. I wanna keep that belt buckle facing the ball so I can really stretch out my midsection and really get loaded up. I'm not a big fan of that. That's really gonna kill your distance. In your backswing, I wanna feel like that belt buckle rotates to the right and you really let your hips and legs be loose. Notice how my legs are moving here. I'm not trying to keep those rigid and tight or I'm really just taking all the speed out of my swing. All right, so on that one, I really felt like I let my belt buckle rotate back. And a good key to this is feel like your knees are loose. Feel like when you make your backswing. Piece number two, let's go ahead and rotate our shoulders. When I let my lower body rotate, my upper body can rotate a lot better also. So if I let my hips move, my shoulders will move more. So here, once I've got my hips working well, I'm gonna add to that my shoulders making a big rotation. On average, on the PGA Tour, players are getting about 120 degrees of shoulder rotation. I don't see hardly anybody getting less than 90 degrees. So it starts with the hips, knees nice and loose, allow the belt buckle to rotate, and then from there, so those are two really big keys. But here's the truth. There's one thing, and if you don't do this correctly, nothing else is gonna work. 